Welcome to Casa Gorordo Museum. Casa Gorordo Museum is a centerpiece project 
of the Culture and Heritage Focus Area of the Ramon Aboitiz Foundation Incorporated. The museum's mission is to promote awareness and appreciation of local culture and enable the Cebuano to tell his story. It is in line with Rafi's vision of touching people, shaping the future. Pinaagi sa Casa Gordo Museum Virtual Tour, makasuway tag guided tours lood sa balay o napagay mga pagdrama sa maayong pamatasan sa una sa mga subuan nun. Halong kalay siya good anak, B. Basin mahal sa kayo na, B, ha? Abli na kayo ang tagdatsan. Hello, B. Afford na kayo ni B. Uy! Only the best for you. Kimi no tori konin. Halong wala niya sila admission fee. Halo ato kong nasuway yan, B. Suway, good! Pwede na magbisita sa Casa Gordo gamit yung mga smartphone, iPhone, Android phone, aside sa laptop or desktop. Halo, yung muna nag-i-di sila ka-accessible? Halo, kasi yun na di mo sorry sa Casa Gordo Museum, uy. Tanda, uy! <laughs> Anya, kumusta man yung experience sa Casa Gurordo Museum Virtual Tour? Nindot kaya akong feeling, Roy, kay Murad siya kong naasa sulod sa museum. Huwag daghan sa kong nakatunan, Roy, bahin sa, sa balay, Roy, kultura. Huwag kabilin sa atong mga sugbuanong katigulangan. O basta, uy, nindot ka ayaw. Huwag ako po nang i-share ang link sa virtual tour nila Glester, Japet, James o Jasper. Huwag sa akong mga mga o family o para kinista na. So ayun mo paglangan? O i-check na ninyo ang website sa casagorordomuseum.org Araw na experience ninyo ang amung na experience. Most loving Father, 
you have brought us to the beginning of a new day. As our eyes open to the morning light, our mouths praise your beauty and goodness in the splendor and design of your creation. We accept the renewed gift of life and grace with gratitude. We offer you our every thought, word, and act today, and pray that it be in accordance with your will and in furtherance of your glory. Make us instruments of your presence to others. Use our minds to understand the big picture, our hearts full of passion and purpose, and our hands to build partnerships. Let us be educate persons to become architects of change and fulfill our promise of elevating lives of communities and people we serve. When evening comes, gather us again, safe under the shelter of your wings, to rest confirmed in your love. And with assurance that with your help, we have taken one more step towards a better world. Amen. Good afternoon and maayong hapon sa tanan. We are back today for another episode of CGM Talk. With April and Semana Santa fast approaching, join us as we reconnect with our Lenten traditions. Today, uh, the talk is entitled Quaresma Cebuana, Lenten Observances in the Island of Cebu. Ako de Aysi Rave and I'll be your host for today. I am the program officer of Casa Gorordo Museum. The CGM Talk online series is one of the many programs of the Casa Gorordo Museum under the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated that promotes Cebuano culture and heritage. For this afternoon, our speaker is a dear friend of the museum. He is the author of the book Bantayan, Passion, Devotion, Tradition. He has documented not only the history, but also the artistry behind 27 professional tableaus or pasos in Bantayan that depicts a scenes and personages uh, from the passion and death of Christ. So please welcome our speaker this afternoon, Dr. Clordoveo Louis Naporda. Maayong hapon, Sir Louis. Maayong hapon, Rabe. Salamat sa introduction. Welcome, everybody, to our Lenten talk uh, today, Quaresma Cebuana. Uh, more especially, I'd like to welcome our friends from Luzon, who might not be familiar with our practices here in Cebu, we'll be talking about basically two distinct practices that we Cebuanos do during Lent. No? All the other practices are common to all Roman Catholics, for that matter. And so uh, let us begin. So talking about Quaresma Cebuana, or how Lent is observed here in the island of Cebu. Uh, left, no? Okay. Liturgically, the Lenten season begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on the afternoon of Monday, Thursday, where the Pascal, the Pascal tree room takes over. In the olden times, abstinence from meat, meat byproducts, dairy, and poultry were excluded in the Roman Catholic Lenten diet for the whole duration of Lent. That's about 50 days, 
including the Sundays of Lent. Today, however, only meat per se are excluded, and abstinence is only mandatory during the Fridays of Lent. Except in Bantayan Island, four hours by bus and ferry northeast of Cebu Island, where since the 1830s, a papal rescript by Pope Leo XII and Pope Gregory XVI allowed the people of Bantayan to eat meat on the Fridays of Lent under the condition that a similar penitential action will be made on a more opportune time, except for the priests who are mandated to observe the fast and abstinence required in Bantayan. This is a practical solution for both the locals and the thousands of visitors who flocked to the island on Holy Week to witness the magnificent Lenten processions. Because during Holy Week, when the moon is out and bright, and because Bantayan is a fishing town, fish catch is uh, very minimal. And the people are also busy attending to church activities. So the Holy Father, in the mid 1800s, 1830s, and uh, extended until 1838, actually, uh, issued this rescript. Bantayan, which is placed under the patronage of San Pedro Apostol, also boasts of its 26 passion tableau of wooden life size images of the different personalities involved in the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before we go to Bantayan, let's first go to Cebu Cathedral, where there is also a very lively uh, Passos procession that is being observed and has been observed for I don't know how long now. Okay, in the Cebu Metropolitan Cathedral, the centuries old practice of conducting a general station of the cross around the church is still observed today. What are uniquely Cebuano in this practice are the inclusion of antique Lenten images mounted on antique carrozas who join the Stations of the Cross processions, which take about two to three hours. Called Procession sa Luhud Luhud by the Cebuanos, this uniquely Cebuano Lenten practice calls for the faithful to genuflect as it makes a stop in each of the 14 street shrines and to kneel during the blessing, also done 14 times. And you can see the pictures here. There are uh, large pictures of uh, the 14 stations of the cross, which is assigned to the parishioners around the cathedral and uh, where they put up a makeshift altar just for this occasion. The Estacion General of the Cebu Cathedral is conducted on Holy Tuesday. Only for the other Fridays of Lent before Good Friday, it is conducted around the church patio at 7 p.m. But the Estacion General, or the Passos Procession, as you would call it, is conducted on Holy Tuesday. And you can see the picture here. We have the Paso, the Misterio de la Segunda Caida, or the step of the mystery of the second fall of Jesus, owned by the Casa Gorodo Museum. And we still have more pictures during the procession of the Luhud Luhud. You can see the, the ladies of the cathedral. These are the lectors, the collectors, the readers, the psalmist. They join the procession attired in their liturgical uniform. And on the other picture, you can see the Kaida, the Segunda Kaida of the Ramon Aboitis Casa Gorodo Museum. The focal point or centerpiece of this Station General is the 19th century tableau of the second fall of Christ while carrying the cross. It is imported from Spain. The tableau came to Cebu in the late 19th century together with its silver plated carroza. And there are six passengers, as it were, or six personages in the tableau. It was imported 
by the family of the first Cebuano Bishop of the then Diocese of Cebu, the Gorodo Egarces family of Barrio Parian. The tableau is now under the care of the Ramon Aboites Foundation, Incorporated, or RAFI, just as the ancestral house of the family is. On the screen, you can see the oratory inside the house. And on the left side of that uh, left photo, you can see the image of St. John the Baptist baptizing the Christ with the Holy Spirit behind it. And on the right, you have a aerial view of Casa Gorodo Museum in Cebu. The other Linton image in Carosa that used to be owned by the Gorodo Egarces family of Parian is that of the Holy Woman with the true image, also known as Santa Veronica. Though not mentioned in the Gospel, the proof of Saint Veronica's existence is the extant veil that bears the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ, which Veronica used to wipe the face of Jesus on his way to Calvary. This relic of the true image is exposed for public veneration only once a year during a certain day in Lent. This is hidden, then it is hidden from public view in a vault inside St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Over 1,000 or 2,000 years, it has become so fragile that only the certain bishops in St. Peter's are allowed to bring the frame out, the frame the veil out and uh, use it to bless the crowd in attendance. A much later Cebuano tradition also involves the use of various fresh ferns and only a minimal of fresh flowers in their Lenten carosas. As you can see on the picture on the left, more foliage, but uh, it's not boring because it's not all green. Uh, there are so many kinds of uh, leaves or foliage that may be used no? to signify that it is Lent. Of course, the cut flower industry is one of Cebu's uh, cash cow products. But uh, during Lent, there is a tendency to tone down on the use of expensive and colorful flowers and a reference to the more basic and humbler looking foliage, which is not really bad looking at all. Now, going back to the Estación General, it is conducted by the rector and his assistant priests. They all join together in the procession. They carry a relic of the Holy Cross surrounded by the relics of different saints, with which they use to bless the faithful after its station. The, re the reliquary is placed on the 14 street shrines with pictures of the traditional way of the cross set up in different places by the family parishioners of the cathedral. After its prayer, the reliquary is used to bless the faithful who are present. Now let's go over to the fabulous Pasos de Bantayan, an island northeast of Thailand. The pictures that you will see in the next uh, slides were all lifted from the book uh, that I wrote in 2015 called Bantayan, Passion, Devotion, Tradition, published by the University of San Carlos Press here in Cebu City. And uh, for those interested, you may contact the USC Press directly or when the Casa Gorordo Museum bookshop or gift shop opens in October this year, you may also buy from them. Everything that we will discuss in this uh, lecture presentation all about Bantayan were all taken from this book. As is customary in Lenten processions in Hispanic Catholic countries, the image of a repentant Saint Peter takes place. The reason for this is that the image of Saint Peter kneeling, weeping, sorrowing, embodies the spirit of Lent, which is all about repentance, contrition, penance, and renewal. The traditional colors of St. Peter's vestments are yellow robe and green tunic. Yellow representing his cowardice when he denied Jesus 
in the house of Caiaphas, and Green represents the hope in his heart that he will be forgiven for what he has done. This colors combination should not be reversed because if it would be reversed, then you would have the official or the traditional colors of St. Joseph, which is green inside and yellow outside. This image of San Pedro in Bantayan is about more than a century old. As you can see, even the areola on the head is antique looking. The crowing rooster is the proper emblem for this image, not the kiss with which we associate uh, St. Peter usually. Because it was the rooster which reminded St. Peter of his broken vow to remain faithful to Jesus until death. So just as the rooster reminded St. Peter, the image of Peter and the rooster takes the lead in Good Friday procession in Bantayan to remind everybody that no matter how heavy the sins we might have committed for as long as we hope and we repent and turn back to God, we shall be forgiven. That is the message of this uh, Paso de San Pedro Arrepentado. Now after the image of St. Peter comes the life-size tableau of the island. No? And here we start with the Last Supper or the first station of the new way of the cross. It portrays the 12 apostles, including Judas Iscariot. So there, are, there is a total of 13 personages on board a huge carosa. That's one thing about the Bantayan Passos. They all have huge carosas, even the solitary Passos, as you can see later on. I hope we have some pictures. But anyway, uh, it has been part of their tradition to use uh, an almost six-wheeler capacity. Because, for example, this tableau, it has... 13 five footer statues made of wood and uh, an ordinary carosa will just not do for this what's also unique about bantayan's last supper tableau is that instead of a paschal lamb as is customary for the jews the main meal is shared but since bantayan is a fishing town the table is laden with fish dishes and bread, as you can see from the close-up picture. Besides, they don't grow lambs in Batayan, but fish are plenty, yes. After the Last Supper tableau, the agony in the garden or Sion del Huerto follows. It portrays the agony of Jesus before his arrest, as narrated in the Gospels of Mark and Luke. This is also the first sorrowful mystery of the Holy Rosary. The image is circa 1877 or earlier, but thereabouts. Anyway, it's 19th century, mid to late 19th century. Originally, there was only Christ and the angel in this tableau, but in 1979, the third generation Camarero Antonio Rap Yap Montemar, who I think even became vice mayor of the town, commissioned the additional images of St. Peter, James, and John, as narrated in the Gospel. And the additional characters made the tableau more faithful to the Gospel narratives. They are in four-feet scale. After the agony in the garden, we have the betrayal of Judas, and the arrest of Jesus or the second station of the new way of the cross. This passage features not just Jesus and Judas, but also the three apostles closest to the Lord, again, Peter, James, and John, plus a Roman soldier and two temple guards, for a total of nine images in one carosa. Former Bantayan Mayor Cecilio Guillama and his wife, Flora Sala, commissioned this tableau in 1992. It's fairly new, as an apple petition for the recovery of his sick granddaughter. The main images of Jesus and Judas both stand at 5 feet and 9 inches. 
or 1.59 meters, while the other seven images measure only 62 inches or 5 feet 1 inch. Now, enlarging the image of Christ amidst his other companions in a paso is common because the highlight is, of course, Jesus Christ. And all pasos are Christocentric. After the arrest, it's followed by the scourging of the pillar in, in Spanish called Señor de la Columna. Here in Cebu, we simply refer to it as Hampak. No? Uh, this paso is also circa 1877, as you can see from the Barba de Caracol style carving in the face of Jesus. And originally, it was just a solitario paso of Christ tied to a column, popularly known as Señor de la Columna. The two tormentors, or judíos, were added in the 1930s. All images are in five-bit scale. The current camareros are the fourth generation of the Escalona, Paso Sadaba, Carabio, and Minoria families of Bantayan. After the scourging at the pillar, the next paso is the fainting of Jesus, or what is called the Señor del Desmayo. One of the, this is one of the three purely Hispanic romantic interpretations of some steps in the Passion of Christ. It's not in the Gospel narrative, but it makes for a logical uh, sequencing. After receiving 39 lashes from a Roman flag room, Nobody can help but fall off, no? or even faint, and some even die for shock. This paso was commissioned by Capitan Magdaleno Villarin as a gift to his wife Maria in, 18, uh, in the 19th century, late 19th century. Sculpted by local Bantayanan sculptor Cipriano Mapiano Carabio, father of the more popular Mabinoy Carabio. Current Camareros are the fourth generation of the Villarín and Alcenas families. After the Dismayo comes the Pass of the Crowning Returns, a.k.a. Señor de la Paciencia. In the Spanish colonial times, this paso was usually represented by an image now more popularly known as Jesús de Paciencia. It shows a sorry-looking, heavily wounded Christ seated on a bench, crowned with thorns with one hand supporting the face while the other carries a stick. It's part of the 1877 Paris inventory. The three tormentors were added sometime in the 1930s. So from being a solo, paso to a tableau. Then comes the first traditional station of the cross, or Jesus is condemned to death. The tableau, again in five feet scale, shows the captive Christ bound by ropes, held by two Roman soldiers, while Pontius Pilate washes his hands after judging the Lord to be crucified, while another Roman soldier stands guard beside Pilate. This puzzle was commissioned by the spouses Hospicio Tinga and Rosario Iscario in 1950. Famous local Bantayanon sculptor Severino Mabinoy Carabio carved the six-piece tableau in four-feet scale. All the images are in the vestir type. The present camareras are the sisters Belen and Dolores, daughters of the original owner. The fourth traditional station of the way of the cross, Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. Commissioned by the Asuncion Pasina Iscario family in 1976, much later one. Current Camarero is Jose Bab Nolasco, one of the six children of Asuncion and Rodrigo Iscario. The tableau features Christ carrying the cross guarded by two Roman soldiers in an image of a kneeling mother. The guy with the sunglass is not part of the tableau. He's one of the floral arranger or florist of the Paso, in case you are curious. 
the fifth station of the traditional way of the cross, we have the Simon of Cyrene help Jesus carry the cross. This is one of the more the more later Paso in Bantayan, commissioned by the siblings Lore Mill and Rick Disamparado in the year 2000. So it's only about 22 years old. And the siblings were inspired by the assistance given by Simon of Cyrene to the suffering Christ, even if he was only compelled to do so by the Roman soldiers, as a model for helping other people carry their burdens in life. It is followed by the sixth station in the traditional way of the cross, or Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Commissioned by Mrs. Milagros Batayola Pasina, wife of Onisipero Pasina in 1978, and executed by local Bantayanan sculptor Antonio Tinga in four feet scale, it's in the Divistir style. You see Christ carrying a cross, guided by two soldiers and a kneeling Veronica holding an image of the Divino Rostro or Holy Face. The current Camareros are the six children, sorry, nine children of the couple who advise that their mother Milagros closely identifies with the compassionate Veronica who bravely bra broke through the Roman cordon sanitaire out of compassion for the suffering of Jesus Christ. The next paso after Veronica is the, state sta the eighth station of the traditional way of the cross, where Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. This six-piece tableau was commissioned by the spouses Maria Rosca and Antonio Ibanez as an expression of their devotion to the Passion of Christ. It was carved in 1978 by noted Bantayanon sculpture, a local sculptor, Antonio Tinga, and it's also in four-feet scale. Currently, the second generation Rosca Ibanez family are the caretakers of the Paso. That is one of the peculiarities of the Lenten devotion of the people in Bantayan. Uh, generation after generation, they take on the responsibility passed down to them by their ancestors, not necessarily parents, but grandparents, even great-great-grandparents. No? And thank God the number of family members expand and as the family members expand they become more and more affluent and so they're able to produce beautiful uh, passos during the lenten processions now we have the ninth station in the traditional way of the cross jesus falls the third time and more popularly known as the tercera caída del señor Original Camareros with former Bantayan mayors, Isidro Iscario and his wife, Remigios Abelio. The couple became mayors one after the other, of course. The tableau is made up of four persons and is executed in the traditional 19th century Baroque style. It depicts the fallen Christ being harassed by two Roman soldiers, while Simon of Cyrene holds the cross of the fallen Christ. After the third fall, the tenth station of the traditional way of the cross is Jesus is stripped of his garments, all in Spanish, El Señor Despojado. This paso was executed and owned by the sculptor Antonio Tinga himself, and is now cared for by his surviving sisters, Belen and Dolores. The images are in four feet scale. The four piece tableau was created in 1980 and has been joining the Bantayan Lenten procession since. After the Despojado comes the crucifixion or the 11th station in the traditional way of the cross. This paso was commissioned by Don Prudencio Saison, who then donated it to the church. In the Libro de Inventarios of 1887 of San Pedro Apostol Paris in Bantayan, this paso is listed among those antique tableau that was processed since the 19th century in Bantayan. Though it is privately owned, it is now being cared by the grandniece or great grandniece 
of uh, the original owner and it is kept in their house. The scene is Christ being crucified by three Roman soldiers. The four images in the tableau were done in five feet scale and in the Vistir style, meaning the images are clothed with uh, textile materials to make it more realistic. Now, just a curiosity at this point, why the term Hudio, Hudio in Filipino language to refer to the Roman soldiers? Okay, Hudio is actually a derisive term deliberately used by Spain in the 15th century to describe Christ's tormentors and murderers for two reasons. First is that Spain wanted to highlight the historical fact that it was indeed the Jews who had Christ tortured and crucified. Second was to show Spain's contempt for Jews on purely religious grounds. As a matter of fact, in 1492, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain expelled all Jewish people in Spain who would not convert to Catholicism, resulting to the European Jewish diaspora. Well, at least they were not gassed, like Hitler in uh, 1939, 1940. Until the present time, in Filipino usage, the term Hudio still means an evil or bad person. And in the screen, you can see the two Hudios, actually Roman soldiers, but who they use anyway, uh, of the Senor Desmayo. And uh, who wouldn't consider them demonic? Look at the expression of their faces, especially the one on the right, with eyes bulging in anger and teeth grinding. While the other one is simply, well, it's milder looking, but still a Hudio, very much a Hudio. The tenth station of the new way of the cross is or las tres cruces. Jesus pardons the repentant thief. This seven-piece tableau features Jesus and the two thieves crucified with him and a fainted Mother Dolorosa at the foot of the cross, attended to by Saints John the Evangelist and Mary Magdalene. Saint Longinus stands at the foot of the cross, waiting for the time to thrust his lunge on the side of Jesus. The Paso is executed in four feet scale, except for the image of the crucified Christ, which is done in five feet scale. As I said earlier, in Pasos, which is a Christocentric devotion, the image of Jesus Christ is always given prominence and is highlighted by its size. Owned and cared for by the members of the Hubaho, Hubahi, yep, family members of Bantayan Island. Next comes the Calvario, or the 12th station of the traditional way of the cross. As an act of thanksgiving for the many blessings received, especially for the education of their children, the spouses Nemesio Akain and Rosa Johnson commissioned the six-piece tableau executed by local sculptor Antonio Tinga in 1950. It features the central figure of the crucified in five-bit scale, while the other five images are done in four feet scale and in the Bistir style. Current Camarera is Virginia Akain Fernandez, or Nang Daya, as she's more popularly known, assisted by her son, lawyer, and law professor, Attorney Jude Fernandez, and his wife, Attorney Rita Fernandez. This is a close-up photo of the Cristo of the uh, Akain Fernandez family in five-bit scale. All the other personnel or, pa or person in the Paso is dis dismembered and uh, stored. But this particular image has a chapel in the house of Nangdaya and where they venerate and pray before the image. Another peculiarity about the Bantayan Pasos is that they're, except for one or two, they're all locally made. So they're not only expressions of devotion, but also they become showcase of local Bantayan talent. Look at this classic santo. And to think that the sculptures were not properly schooled. They used their innate talent 
and their faith in carving beautiful images such as this one. Who, when you see it face to face, you can't help but agonize and feel the suffering of the crucified in Calvary. After the crucifixion, you have the 13th station in the traditional way of the cross or El Descendimiento, where Jesus is taken down from the cross. This eight paso, eight piece paso was carved in 1951 by Severino or Mabinoy Carabeo and given as a memento to his nephew, Cesar Pistano Sr. and wife Petra Layesi. This to me is the most dramatic passion tableau in the whole of Cebu. Look at how twisted the body of the dead Christ is, the head falling to the right side, the lifeless arm, right arm, and the lifeless left arm, and the twist of the body. It's the most dramatic, as I said, in the whole of Cebu Island that I have seen. It features the dead Christ, Joseph of Arimathea, St. John Nicodemus, there up in the cross, bringing down the, hoisting down the dead body, with St. John the Evangelist and four women disciples uh, receiving it. Since 1991, the sibling Cesar Pistano Jr., Maria Bleth Pistano de la Serna and Dorotea Pistano are the new camareras of this 1950 Paso de la Descendimiento. Next comes the Pieta, or the 13th station in the traditional way of the cross, uh, executed by sculptor Mabinoy Carabio in 1947 and commissioned by the spouses Juliana Pareño and Manuel Mabugat. Current Camarero is Antonio Mabugat, supported and assisted by the second and third generation of Mabugats. The family members, that are, some of them are living in the United States. The family members usually go home to Bantayan and Holy Week to join the annual family reunion, to join the procession, and to just express the devotion to their paso. And then the 14th station of the traditional way of the cross, Jesus is laid in the sepulcher, or la sepultura del Señor, or the entombment in English. One of the newer pasos in Bantayan, this was commissioned in 1963 by the spouses Praxedes Garcia and Manuel Ribo. Fourth child Filomeno Noeminong Ribo is the current lead camarero, supported by his siblings Eliseo, Rodolfo, Lucita, and Nida, as well as their children. Now, after the tableau, let's now take a look at the Paso Solitarios de Bantayan, or the singular uh, images, Lenten images processed in Bantayan. We started off with St. Peter as the lead in the procession, and now we have the other singular pasos. We have San Juan Evangelista or St. John the Evangelist. The beloved disciples image is part of the 1877 parish inventory in Bantayan. It is executed in the Debistri style in four feet scale. Original caretakers were the spouses William May and Filomena Villatiran. And the current caretaker is one of the children or grandchildren, Hamlet May. Santa Maria Magdalena, under the care of the fourth generation descendants of Candelario Arsenas e Rubio. The image is in four feet scale in the Divisir style and is one of those included in the 1877 parish inventory. Then comes Santa Marta de Bitania, sculpted by Cipriano Carabio in the late 19th century. The image is now carved for by the fifth generation members of the Valendes, Duragas, Ruedas, and Escanuela cousins. The original owners were the spouses Vidal Valendes and Marta Alontaga of Bantayan Island. Then you have Saint Veronica, or better known as the Holy Woman Veronica with the True Veil. 
listed in the 1877 Paris inventory. The image is carved in four feet scale of the Debustier style. Original caretakers were Marciano Batuhan and his wife Alberta Sarsosa. Current camareros are the sisters Elisea and Gloria Batuhan. The sisters are training the grandnephew, Ray Sabillon, who is now the de facto camarero, as the two sisters are in their mid and late 80s already. Santa Salome, the mother of the apostles James the Elder and John the Evangelist, wife of Zebedee. Her saintly emblem is a censer, representing her willingness to offer her two sons to the ministry of Jesus. The image was commissioned by the spouses Filomena Iscario and Severino Ibanez. <coughs> Excuse me. Karen Camarero is their grandnephew, Rodolfo Iscario, and his wife, Salome Bacos. A permanent chapel outside of the house where the image is planned, as there are some devotees who visit and venerate it in their house on regular days. So Saint Salome must be showing extraordinary favors to her devotees in Bantayan, so that the owners, the present camareros, have decided to build her a chapel so they don't have to go up to the house proper to pray and venerate the image of the saint. Then you have the beautiful Our Lady of Sorrows. It's also listed in the 1887 Paris inventory. The original camarero was Mrs. Mary Iscario Mena. Then it passed on to her niece, Rosie Rubio Sanchez, who married a Cebuano politician, Ribumafel Olganza. Then the image is now under the care of Jose Ribumafel, Joey Boy Olganza, since 2009. On Monday, Thursday's Passos, Our Lady's image is vested in white and lavender. But on Good Friday, she changes into an all black and some for the burial procession. Finally, we have El Santo Entierro, or the Dead Christ. Listed in the 1887 parish inventory, the five foot wooden image of the Dead Christ has been under the care of the Rubio Despi families down to its fifth generation. It is executed in the Gosne style which means the statue's arms and head are hinged to the body, enabling these parts to be moved as may be necessary. The processional carriage called Calandra is the most decorated carriage on Good Friday, as you can see on the picture. It's all over, it's covered with uh, flowers, white flowers only, all over. The image is covered with a heavily embroidered blanket called Paño de Funebre in either black or white color, but usually white, as you can see in this picture of the Santo Entierro of Bantayan. Now, aside from being allowed to eat meat on uh, the Fridays of Lent, for as long as they repay it uh, in another penitential act some other day, there is an unusual Bantayanon devotion and tradition. And among the local Bantayan fisher folks, both big time and small time, it has become the tradition to place bundles of cold cash wrapped in white cloth to serve as the top cushion of the image of the dead Christ during the Good Friday procession. After the procession, which lasts about two hours, the cash is retrieved by the respective owners leaving behind a portion to the caretaker of the image, while the balance is used as seed money for the fishing business. Nobody can tell me how long this has been going on, but uh, the old folks that I interviewed when I was in the island doing the research for this book told me that it has been going on for as long as they can remember. Now, there is another peculiar tradition of Bantayan they're called the Saarans. Another curious practice where children, especially the sickly ones, are made to perform a devotional act to a particular saint by wearing the habit of the saint to whom the parents 
have devoted or have uh, asked the intercession to heal their child. Most popular, of course, is the Saaran for St. Peter the Apostle, he being the patron of Bantayan. Just note, there are already four other parishes in the whole of Bantayan Island today with different patron saints. This boy in the photo is a Saaran of St. Peter as Pope. As such, he wears a rich gold vestment with stole, papal tiara, and carries a scepter. The habit is worn during Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday processions. The habit is never changed until the vow, the number of years, is completed. The boy at the left, the one in white and dressed, Dressed is a Saaran of the Santo Nino when he was still as tall as the original habit. Now that he has grown, he still wears the same habit, although it is obvious that he has already outgrown it. The two boys on the right photo wears the black and white habit of St. Vincent Ferrer, another very popular saint all over the country. And if you notice the small kid, uh, he wears that habit, which is just right, up to his uh, feet. If the promise or the pledge is for him to wear the habit for 10 years and he turns 15 and he grows as tall as his elder brother on his right, then that would still be the habit used unless he would grow fat and the habit would no longer fit him. And that's the time to change it. But otherwise, the local, the parents consider the original habit as a sacred one, part of the vow. Very unusual indeed. These two Saaran children on the left are dressed on the right, on your screen on the right, are dressed as Our Lady of Fatima and the Holy Child Jesus. While the child on the left is obviously a Saaran of Saint Joseph as he wears the traditional green and yellow colors. Well, we have uh, gone virtually through Bantayan and we have uh, shared with you the result of our research there for one whole week in 2015. So I'd like to thank you very much for your participation. And may we all have a fruitful Lenten celebration now that uh, most parts of the country are on alert level one. No part is yet zero, but processions are allowed. So. Let's resume our Lenten practices. And at this point, I'd like to thank, of course, the Casa Gorordo Museum for sponsoring this talk and my assistant researcher and photographer, Rave Axel Fabria. Thank you very much. And questions may now be asked. Okay, thank you, Kayo, um, Sir Luino, for the very uh, detailed discussions about um, the Lenten tradition of uh, Bantayan. In depth, did say yes or no? Ang details niya from the scale of the pasos and all that are really in there. Um, I'd also like to thank our viewers, na atay around 20, man siguro, 20 Kabok live viewers as of now. Thank you so much for um, joining us this afternoon talking about um, Lenten traditions of uh, the Cebu Island. Now, we have come to our question and answer portion. No, um, we actually have a few questions. I think that I do have a question. Um, but before I our our viewers, um, I also have a question of my own. Kay, uh, na discuss man to gari na sa sugo jud uh, at the beginning of the discussion of Sir Louis about um, uh, bantayan being allowed uh, bantayan instructor being allowed to eat meat uh, during semana santa normally uh, for catholics no dili man jud pwede because it's part of our um kind of sacrifice during that now uh, i have the book right here actually the bantayan book of uh, sir louis if, you, uh, if our viewers like a copy you can contact uh, usc press or you can also contact casa gorodo museum now i'm asking just this question not only for me but for also those nga kanang wala ko kahibaw so nga naman di ay uh, sir louis nga ang katong uh, rescript na expire naman to siya so why is it uh carried on hantod karon sa bantayan na pwede gihapon sila mukha o nag meet uh during lent okay uh 
I have asked Cardinal Vidal when he was still alive about it, no? because risk scripts, papal risk scripts are uh, time sensitive. Uh, the first risk script uh, issued by Leo XII was good for 10 years. And uh, the second risk script issued by Benedict the Fifteenth was good for five years. So it lasted for a total of 15 years. When I asked Cardinal Vidal about this, the Cardinal's answer was, yeah, the risk scripts were 10 and five years, but by that time it has become a tradition in the island. And so uh, it was continued. At this point, I also would like to point out that uh, in my interview with some native Bantayanons, they say that they actually, despite the risk script, no, they actually abstain from meat on all the Fridays of Lent, especially on Good Friday. But since there is a dearth of fish, they serve meat to their visitors from other islands. They themselves do not eat meat. And I saw this on the Good Friday evening in the house of Nangdaya, where we were invited for uh, dinner after the procession, that uh, there are two tables, actually, one laden with meat for all those who come from other islands. But there is another table laden with nothing but seafoods for those who want to observe it. So it's not mandatory that when you go to Bantayan, you have to eat meat on Good Friday. It's an option. It's an option made available, as I said earlier, for practical reasons. Because one, uh, during Holy Week, if you notice, the moon is bright and uh, no fish would be caught dead. And secondly, people in Bantayan, the families, no, up to today, fifth generation, sixth generation, are busy in church preparing for their passos. So that was the reason that the script was uh, issued to them in 1830s. I see. So, um, yeah, it's good that we cleared that up. No, kasi nung daapoy magunahon na panganong sa bantayan raman. I also remember during my college days, uh, Sir Louis, no, nga naajud ko yung mga classmates sa unang abasta. Ting si Mana Santa gani dili sila manguli sa ilaha, but rather they go to bantayan because kana ato sila manglaag kaya pwede mo nindot ang dagat and then makakaon sila ug karne. Yeah. So, so it's a thing, no? Well, they they go there for a different reason, but the main reason why people go to bantayan is uh, to observe their Lenten practices, like what we do, no? Usually. Okay, yes. the younger ones, especially, they camp in the beach. I know, I saw it myself. Pao <laughs> lagi. <laughs> And I, by the way, sir, no, I comment din he si um, Sir William love the backgrounds ko no so nakit na appreciate jud nila ang ato ang um, background nga no ni ang karosa sa Casa Gordo Museum that yeah. features uh, the segunda kaida yes. no na um, gabi ni pud jud mi nahuman pud og butang sa mga uh, buwak ani para mahimong background sa ato talk for this uh, afternoon. Thank you so much uh, Sir William for noticing no ang ato ang background. Um and moving forward to another question, um, na I question din he si Sir Stevie Romano. What does paso mean, to na Sir? Yeah, question. Okay, uh, paso is a Spanish word which literally means step. So when we talk of Lenten pasos or Lenten steps, we we talk about the different uh, steps that Christ took or suffered. Uh, during his uh, agony, his passion, and death on the cross. Okay. Now, uh, another to answer, no, na ay, nag thank you din he from uh, Surigao City, si Miss Chari. Thank you, Kaayu, ma'am, for watching all the way from Sur I'm from Surigao City, by the way. So, na, 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 nagtrabaho lang ko din he sa Cebu. Um, yeah, thank you so much, our fellow Surigao nuns watching uh, Casa Gordon Museum. No? Um, aside from the question about the paso, na aputay pangutana din he about here uh, from uh, an avid follower sa Casa Gordon Museum page. This is from Francis uh, Branzuela. Good afternoon, Sir Louis. Are there other tableaus to be included for this year, this year's paso in Cebu Metropolitan Cathedral? I saw some of them. I saw some of them of the Pasos exhibit last 2017. So, naabadaw madugang sa this year nga kuan, sir, procession. 
I am not sure if there would be more than uh, more pasos than the usual at the Cebu Cathedral. Uh, of course, may kulang pa. Napagikuwang, no? Uh, but I'm not sure if uh, there would be additional pasos in the cathedral for this year. Especially because I am no longer connected there. Okay. But okay. In, in your observation, uh, Sir Louis, by the way, kanang asaman ang mas kumplito ba ang pasos uh, for for every Semana Santa ang procession? Is it mas, mas daghan ba ang ang uh, karosa o ang pasos nga naa sa uh, bantayan or yes. the one that we have here? Ah, bantayan na yun. We're in Cebu. Uh, we have 26 in bantayan. No? In cathedral, we only have about 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly now. So as far as I know, of course, we have new parishes which might have more at this point in time. But as far as I know, as of 2015, a seven-year-old info, Bantayan still taps it uh, all over Cebu. But it's good to have uh, new parishes have more pasos, no? For as long as the intention and the devotion is there, and uh, not just for show, or aron lang yun ingnon nga, na sila yung santo nga, the demand or pasong the demand because that would be hypocritical and that would not that would be counter to the spirit of Lent. You know? If you notice, the ones in Bantayan have been cared for by the same family for five or six generations already. And here at the Cebu Metropolitan Cathedral, uh, the antique pasos of the Sosas, uh, the Tamayos, the second, third generation also. So that should be the real spirit in coordination of course with the parish priest i have a parish priest friend assigned in a mountain parish and uh, he was surprised that uh, he thought the parishioners would not have uh, images for lent but he was surprised they would at least they have seven <laughs> and i told him that's good enough you can encourage the other parishioners there to add for next year after all this is just uh, we're still on alert level one so we have to be cautious in uh, observing our Lenten observations for this year. Yes, exactly, Bitao Sir Luino. And it's good that we are trying to bring back these traditions, kay, ang, ang, uh, because of the long period that um, we halted these uh, processions, no? kay, uh, those those uh, young ones or those emerging na to, nga mga Cebuanos who are supposed to also learn about this and they are the ones to keep on the tradition because of yes. you know the, the restriction so it's it's very good that we are trying to reconnect to to our traditions and kana if if uh, na mga municipio or towns here in uh, Cebu nga gamay ra pasos we hope that um someone would lead ito. um we have uh, someone would lead ang kaning mga youth pod nila so that kanang makakuha pod sila ani nga nga devotion nga mapasa pod nila and um kana we can we can keep on doing what we're supposed to do uh, during these seasons now we have we have more questions actually medyo na natay mga tag-as din hinga mga question no? uh, we have two questions from us uh, kita mini his sir Ellis Mendez um so ang iyang question sir Louis is that are there retired images which used to be part of the Pasos procession of the Cathedral of Cebu? And are there also retired images uh, from Bantayan? And why are uh, what are the reasons behind the images retirement? Okay. As far as Bantayan is concerned, no retired images. Actually, the people there, after I published the book, after San Carlos published the book, started adding more Pasos. Uh, as far as the Cebu Cathedral is concerned, I also am not aware of any retired images. They have been there for some time, and uh, even if the original Camareros are already gone, uh, the new ones are still trying to maintain it. No? Uh, you will note it's not easy or cheap to maintain a paso, especially because it comes out twice a year. And, you not you need only you need to have a lot of money and manpower resources to bring these uh, 
carousals with the images from your place to the cathedral and back two times a, a year. You know? On uh, as far as the cathedral is concerned, on uh, Holy Tuesday and on Good Friday, most of the passes. So. Uh, if there are, I am not aware. Uh, there has been no Paso procession for two years. So I'm not sure how many Pasos they will have this year. Uh, if at all there will be, I am not sure yet if the Cebu Metropolitan Cathedral will conduct their traditional hudluhud on Holy Tuesday and burial procession on Good Friday. Maybe they will, but as to will there be any retired Pasos, I do not know. I'm sure uh, the Segunda Kaida of Casagorda will be there on Tuesday, no? <laughs> but on Friday, I do not know. Sige. Yes, sir. Um, we actually have um, preparations na, no, for, for the Segunda Kaida for uh, this paso right here to be processed sa cathedral on uh, Tuesday. So, mauna siya. Um, this would be the last question uh, for this afternoon. It's from uh, Miss Juby Esperanza. So, niya pangutan are what materials were usually used for the statues? Is it wood or ivory? It's uh, wood. I have not seen an ivory statue of a paso here in Cebu. I have seen a lot. Uh, the ivory ones I've seen are in uh, Manila, in Makati, specifically, no? But here in Cebu, it's uh, all wood, different kinds of wood, basically santol wood, because that is what abounds here. And even in Mindanao, uh, wood lang po. Sa Manila lang yung may mga ivory na pasos na santo. Okay. So thank you so much, Miss uh, Jugi, for that uh, question. No? Uh, Nabajun tayo last nga pahabol nga comment din hey, we have a viewer watching from Pinamungahan, si Sir Aiki Pakanya Baron. Thank you so much, sir, for watching uh, CGM Talk this afternoon and being with us. Now, um, before before I let you uh, go, Sir Louis, no, I'd like to ask also, do you have any um, parting words uh, sa ato ang viewers karon? We are at, I think, at 18 ka live viewers. And uh, this video, by the way, the talk will stay in our Facebook page and it will also be uploaded in our YouTube channel. So, na ganahan mo, tanawusab, they can still watch uh, the video. So, na ba kay ganahan, sir, nga um, parting words isulti? Oh, yes. I would like to invite the listeners, especially the younger ones, no? uh, to try and develop a devotion to the passion of the Lord by uh, being active in your parish church during Lent. As I said, if you come from a uh, not-so-rich parish, you can start with one or two. But uh, you have to save for it. Uh, owning a paso is no joke. And it's not right that you have to beg for arms so that you can just have a paso. Uh, owning a paso and being devoted to a paso of the Senor, of the Lord, is an act of penitence, it's an act of penance. So nothing instant. You save money and then you have a statue made and then you save money for its maintenance. Uh, true piety should be the topmost consideration and not the gaya-gaya or the soya-soya because this neighbor has this paso and therefore they want to have that. No, that would be the wrong reason for having a paso. And of course, coordinate always with your local parish priest because you might have identical pasos and then you'll have a problem with it. No, uh, Humility, repentance, humility, the message is very important for us to consider from them. Uh, but go ahead. Uh, observe. Let's continue to observe our uh, Lenten Paso tradition here at Cebu. That's all. Okay. Thank you so much again, Sir Louis. Thank you so much. Uh, You're for welcome, Ray. My pleasure. <laughs> accepting our invitation. Your discussion this afternoon has surely uh, given insight to this uh, beloved tradition that we have during Semana Santa. So, um, okay.
So for those of you who are watching us today, I, uh, I'd like to thank all of you again, um, viewers in Facebook and in YouTube, for joining us today. We hope that we have imparted valuable and interesting information to you guys. If you'd like to see more talks um, from Casa Gordo Museum, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe in our uh, YouTube channel. Not only talks are uploaded there, but we also have um, short videos about uh, towns here uh, in Cebu. We also are planning to uh, release more videos about culture and heritage. So watch out lang pa sa updates no sa ato ang uh, page. Uh, for those of you who'd like to get your um, e-certificates from uh, this talk, we've posted uh, the link na sa comment section below. Um, you can just answer a very short feedback form and then automatically masend na, na ang e-certificates sa inyong um, emails. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, stay safe and we hope to see you again at Casa Gorda Museum. Adlao, welcome to Casa Gorordo Museum.
Kaya Kakao in the 21st century. Before, in Lantui Cave, on the highest mountain in Argao, lived Maria Kakao. Casa Gorordo Museum is a centerpiece project of the Culture and Heritage Focus Area of the Ramon Aboitiz Foundation Incorporated. The museum's mission is to promote awareness and appreciation of local culture and enable the Cebuano to tell his story. It is in line with Rafi's vision of touching people, shaping the future. Pinaagi sa Casa Gordo Museum Virtual Tour, makasuway tag guided tours lood sa balay o napagay mga pagdrama sa maayong pamatasan sa una sa mga subuan nun. Hello, kalay siya good anak, B. Basin mo halos ikaw yun ako, B, ha? Abli na ba yung tag dito sa... Hello, B. Afford na kayo ni B. Uy! Only the best for you. Kimi no tori konin. Hello, wala di sila admission fee. Hello, ato kong nasuway yan, B. Suway, good! Pwede na mo bisita sa Casa Gordo gamit yung mga smartphone, iPhone, Android phone, aside sa laptop or desktop. Hala, yung nanagin din sila ka-accessible? Hala, kasi yun na din mo sorry sa Casa Gordo Museum, oi. Tana, uy! <laughs> Anya, gumusto ba naman experience sa Casa Gorordo Museum Virtual Tour? Nindot kaya akong feeling, Roy, kay Murad siya kong naasa sulod sa museum. Huwag daghan sa kong nakatunan, Roy, bahin sa, sa balay, Roy, kultura. Huwag kabilin sa atong mga sugbuanong katigulangan. O basta, uy, nindot ka, ayaw. Ako po nang i-share ang link sa virtual tour nila Glester, Japet, James o Jasper. Huwag sa akong mga mangod o family o para ginista na. So ayun mo paglangan? O i-check na ninyo ang website sa casagorordomuseum.org 
Araw na experience ninyo ang among na experience.